and hold the head of the little babies. <laughs> Welcome to Act the Tooth of the Johnny Russell All Star Show. And we welcome the man himself who Can is put discovered this by Barry. You, you won't knock it over, will you? Barry okay. and then <laughs> okay. made a legend by the great Johnny O'Keefe. Would you welcome and great applause to Roland Shaw? slower these days. I had a fall the other day, accident, I put my hand down on a chair and knocked out two teeth. And they took me to hospital. I said, look at the concussion. He said, have you got vertigo? I said, no, I just lived down the road. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> Let me get inside of here. I've got to tell you this though, we still keep in touch with all the fellas. There's only four of us left now, you know, from six o'clock rock. Myself, Wally Lee, Lucky Star, and Brian, uh, and uh, Jay Hurley. And I spoke to Jay the other day. You know, he's a hypochondriac. Oh, is he ever. He said he got a clean bill of health. I said, that's good. He said, no, I'm going to get a second opinion. <laughs> I said, Jay, do you want to go fishing? He said, no, I might catch something. <laughs> <laughs> Six o'clock rock, I did my first one. 1960, October, I was two. Oh, yeah. Come on, everybody, it's six o'clock. Ah. Jackie Weaver. They were a big, big item. 
But poor old Brian went over to England and he looked like he was going to become a big star there, but he got homesick. He missed his Jackie and he missed Australia and he came home and four weeks later she gave him the Dear John. Uh, and he was, he was recording with Norrie Paramore and he was doing a big time over there. I said, well, you're lucky, Brian, because Darren Hinch lost the house. <laughs> he said, Roland, when I was 16, Jackie took something from me that a man can only give once in his life. <laughs> oh, I didn't ask any more questions. He's a very private person. But her autobiography is out, and there's a whole chapter to the event. I know, my wife said, ask him how he made it last a chapter. Ooh. My wife's got a very sick sense of humour. Keeps on calling out water, but the Dead Sea. <laughs> Now, there's a song with Brian sang for his Jackie on 6 o'clock rock, 1961. Can you see? Come on, like a dream, peaches and cream, a little slight strawberry wine. You're 16. Six o'clock rock this week with Johnny Devlin. 
He's beautiful. I'll come with you and get his autograph. And she came with me. She said, you wait here, I'm going to get his autograph. And she went to get his autograph, and I never saw her again either. <laughs> I was getting used to it by now. You know? But I was there with Barry Stamp when Laurel Lee first turned up to do Six O'Clock Rock. Now, she'd come straight off the fairgrounds, the showgrounds, and she was wearing a gold lame costume, swimming costume, with a fringe at the bottom. You didn't wear that sort of stuff on on TV in those days. And so the producer, Peter Page, said, have you got another outfit? She said, no. He said, film her from the waist up only. She starts a show. Oh, goodness! Oh, 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 oh. Stop, said Peter Page, film her from the neck up only. <laughs> and she had a problem with Johnny O'Keefe. John had a thing about girls doing boys' songs. He didn't like boys' songs being sung by girls. She wanted to do Cradle of Love and, and Hippie Hippie Shake. He said, you can do Hippie Hippie Shake, but you've got to do one girl's song. This was the girl's song. Give it. He wanted to do this one on six o'clock rock, just me. Well, oh, Lisa, my Lisa, man, I need you. You're so like a lady with a six smile. Is it only that you love me that I need you? Oh, that more than Lisa, strange nurse in your smile. Do you smile at him, love oh, Lisa? I was this joy and I had a broken heart. Johnny O'Keefe said, hey, hold it, hold it. This is a rock and roll show. Barry Stanton, I want you on 6 o'clock rock because I think you look like Elvis Presley. Oh I want you to do it like Elvis is doing. So in the key of F, this is the way Barry did it, 9 at 59, 6 o'clock rock. <laughs>
thousands. And uh, we did a, a Hunters Hill Rotary function. They were raising money for the Ukraine. And it was myself, Frank Ifield, and Kamal. Kamal was there, eh? And we had a great photo taken, myself, Frank Ifield, and Kamal. And there was Frank, Kamal, and myself, and Kamal said, Ooh, my goodness, I feel like a Benjamin sandwich. <laughs> it was funny. Uh, the whole room decorated, Michael on it, did it? The whole room was decorated with Kamal's record covers. And he walked in and he said, Oh, somebody's been to Vinnie's. <laughs> uh, but Frank has been teaching me, <laughs> trying to teach me how to yodel. <clears throat> you know, his first, when he started, he went to England. He didn't have a contract, but then he got a record contract, and his first attempt on the chart was, uh, I could love. Boy, the thing is that funny. I go like me. I can smile when I got no money. I go like me. Now, he didn't make the chance with that, but George Formby did. Now, that was a surprise. But Frank's trying to teach me the other. She taught me the other. Johnson. Uh, and you think about it, if we'd have given Brill Cream to Boris Johnson, 
he might still be Prime Minister of England because you can't vote for a man who can't comb his own hair. Hey, but I've got to tell you this. Brian Davies is looking more like Clive Palmer every day. But he said, that's funny, coming from somebody who looks like... She's moved me again. Moved me to walk walk. Five times she's moved me in the last seven years. Every time I'm away on tour, she moves and I have to find out where she moves to. And people think I'm joking, but I'm not. Huh? This time she moved, she did it. She moved to Mitch Point. Mitch Point is so small our postcode's a fraction. It's between Proserpine and Mackay. Hottest place I've ever been in my life. She decided at 81 years of age to lead in a new career and she bought a mango farm. <laughs> They've got no workers, no backpackers and this, the uh, flying foxes destroyed the whole crop. But she told me, she said, you are the Donald Trump of mango farming. She said, you don't know, how, don't know what you're doing, but you're pretty good at it. <laughs> so thanks a lot, yeah. So that's where I am up there in Woolworth. But it's funny, you know, every Monday I go to Proserpine to buy supplies and that because we're out of town. And I put on a long sleeve shirt and tr long trousers and shoes and socks. And you go to the town and they say, is it court or a funeral? I said, nobody wears court or clothes up there. It's all thongs and shorts and singlets. And it really is, it's a different place completely. I, and it's, it's neglected up there, very neglected. We definitely need a seventh state up there, yeah, that's for sure. Now, but I was talking about Frank Eiffel, and where was I? Oh, yeah, Frank said there's a song on your CD. Actually, I just saw somebody I recognise up there too, John Campbell. There he is up the back. John and I cruised together, didn't we? On the, on, for Princess. I did 98 cruises with Princess. And once you turn 75, you get the flick. I do, I do think it, but it's, uh, it's amazing it on a ship. Or people say they're love boats, actually they're more prune barges, I think. But when you're on a ship, people ask interesting questions like, does the ship generate its own electricity? Oh no, it's got a long lead all the way back to Sydney. And do the crew sleep on board at night? No, a helicopter takes us home every evening. <laughs> And they, the water in the swimming pool, is it fresh water or salt water? Well, on this ship, it's salt water. They empty it every evening and refill it every morning. Oh, I knew it was salt water because it's got waves. <laughs> so it was a very interesting time on the ship. It was, but my favorite place to go, oh, I've got to tell you this, I had to pick up a ship in China. And I flew into Shanghai, and then I went down to the port, and there was a beautiful Chinese girl who said, you like to watch? I said, beg your pardon? She said, you like Rolex? A Rolex? Oh, yes, please. I said, is it real? Yes. I said, how much? She said, $20. $20, you can't bear it. There's look. It says six o'clock, twice a day it says the right time. I have to have another watch to tell the time, but I'm going to roll it, so. But then I had to get a taxi from the airport to the ship. And in this taxi in China, there was a sign in the taxi said, this driver speaks English. I thought, what a good idea. They should try that in Sydney. Oh. <laughs> My favourite place to cruise was New Zealand. Oh, God, God,